Welcome to the seminar series on SUA and pipeline engineering. My name is Bert Bosseler. I am the scientific director of the IKT Institute for Underground Infrastructure. In this seminar session, we will deal with the issue of root resistance of sewers and pipelines. We already know this picture from other presentations in this seminar series. In our cities, numerous sewer and pipe systems are underground and they take up a lot of space here. For the quality of life in our cities, however, we also need a lot of green space. Just think of the consequences of climate change with more heat, but also more intense rainfall. It is often forgotten, however, that trees not only need space on the surface, but that we also need about the same amount of space underground for the root system, so that the trees can develop properly. And that, of course, can lead to conflicts because it is a crowded underground. Usually there are already many lines there and space is limited. If roots grow near those sewers and pipelines, many interactions are possible. You see this here, for example, on the right. Roots grow into the pipe trench. They can grow around the pipe from the outside and, for example, pull on the pipe under wind load. Roots can also grow into the sewers and pipes through pipe joints or through leaking lateral connections. The cross-section is then often completely blocked, which is a huge problem for operational safety. Here we see how a root has grown around a gas pipeline. It has followed the surface of the pipeline with its growth and has also completely enclosed the pipeline in some areas. Due to the growth of the root, the gas pipeline has been dented in some parts. Here, unforeseen stresses can occur in the pipe material and, in addition, the flow cross-section is reduced. In this picture, we see a typical example of root intrusion into a sewage pipe. The roots have grown in through the pipe joint and have spread into the cross section. In operation, these roots are usually removed with root cutters. However, this has to be repeated regularly because the roots naturally grow back again and again. In addition, sewage can exfiltrate or groundwater can infiltrate through the leaks. So there is definitely a need for rehabilitation. When choosing a rehabilitation method, the following questions arise. Why do roots actually grow into the pipe joint? And what can we practically do to prevent this? Let's start with the first question. Why do roots grow into pipe joints? Why do they actually grow into pipe trenches at all? Well, for a long time, people thought there is water, nutrients in the sewers, that, that must be the reason. But if we look at this picture, we get doubts. This is a wastewater pipe. The roots only grow in the upper part of the pipe. And if we look very closely, we see where the mean water level was, we find a kind of borderline. Above this line, the roots have grown in and they are still alive. But below this line, in the sewage area, the roots are dark, dead and rotten. Obviously, the sewage is not very attractive for the roots. They become diseased and die. But if the sewage is not the motive for the ingrowth, what is it? Well, roots are looking for space to spread. We have seen in many excavations in our research that the roots in the trench particularly like to grow into loose soil areas, such as here under the pipe, in the support area. Yes, the roots are really directed by the soil properties. We have studied this in detail with botanists from the University of Bochum in Germany. Roots prefer to grow into loose, poor, rich areas. The root tip has a hydraulic cap, as shown here on the right. The longitudinal growth of the root takes place in this cap and the cap pushes itself into the area of the soil that offers the least resistance. That means into loose, poor, rich soils rather than into dense soils. And unfortunately, it is the case that our pipeline trenches in the city are usually the only areas with particularly porous material. So it's no wonder that roots grow around pipes. But then, why do they also grow into the pipe? Well, in the picture on the left, we see that roots often grow along the pipes. 
We even know roots especially like to grow along interfaces with the soil, and the pipe surface is such an interface. And when the root then reaches the pipe joint, for example a socket, it finds even more cavities in the joint. And what happens there, we see in this picture. The root grows into the pipe joint and meets the seal. But the seal blocks the way, so the root first grows along the seal. Now, a root also forms side roots. The lateral roots that grow outwards, that means out of the joint, can develop freely. Those lateral roots, however, that grow directly towards the seal are trapped. They cannot get out, and they only know one way, forwards, against the seal, under the seal. And then it comes to a real test of strength. The root has to press itself against the seal in order to continue growing. In our research, we ask ourselves, what pressures can roots actually exert? Sewers are usually tested with an internal pressure of 0.5 bar. Is that enough? How much pressure can a root create? Can it also grow into a tight pipe joint? Well, it can. A root can grow into a tight joint. Unfortunately, our measurements confirmed that. Here we see the experimental setup. We let the roots of experimental plants grow against the pressure plate and thereby we measure the pressure of the roots. And here we see a result. Many plants can easily exert a pressure of 6 bar or even more. We have measured up to 11 bar in some extreme cases. To compare the whole thing with the performance of typical pipe joints, we then also applied the same pressure measurement foils to the spigot end of socket joints. We then pushed the pipes together and measured the pressure of the seal. Especially when the pipe joint is under shear loads, you can then quickly see that there are areas with low pressure through which a root can grow in. So we see that it is not all easy to make an absolutely root-resistant pipe joint. But how can we then protect our systems against root intrusion? Well, the best protection against root growth is the roots grow strongly and vigorously, but somewhere else. That means we give them enough room to develop elsewhere so that they don't have to grow into the vicinity of the pipes at all. But that also means we have to pay more attention to the properties of the soil. We can see a nice example of this in this picture. The roots grow in a loose substrate and meet a backfill that is obviously not rooted through. On the contrary, the roots grow around the filling material. If the pipe joint were underneath this material, it would be well protected. But what kind of material is this? Is it particularly strong or why don't the roots grow in here? Well, we have already learned roots are looking for pore space and the decision where to grow is always a relative one. In this case, the decisive factor is that the surrounding soil is very porous and an ideal substrate for root growth. The light colored material, on the other hand, has few pores and is a soft plastic bentonite mixture. So it is not solid at all, but it is low porosity and clearly less attractive than the surrounding soil. So we see, when it comes to root protection, the bedding material of the pipes can play a decisive role. The bedding of the pipeline must be less attractive than the surrounding soil. These relationships have also been laid down in a comprehensive set of rules in Germany. Here you can see the references of identical texts that were issued by the associations of road construction, gas and water supply, and sewage technology. And as the IKT, we have been intensively engaged in this work. In practice, root protection can then also be combined with the use of flowable backfill. Here we see a construction site where a gas pipeline is embedded in flowable backfill. Many cubic meters of a good tree substrate are then installed over the pipeline zone and then a tree is planted. The roots are then supposed to spread in the substrate. The flow of backfill, on the other hand, is much less attractive for the roots and is supposed to protect the pipeline. But 
What do we need to consider when rehabilitating a section after a root intrusion? We can see an example here. After a root intrusion, the roots were milled off and the sewer was sealed with a CIPP liner system. The great advantage of the liner in this case is that we install a new continuous pipe without any pipe joints. This makes it impossible for roots to grow in. However, the roots can of course continue to grow into the annular space between the liner and the old pipe, we, as we can see here in this picture. One question is now whether the roots can push in the liner by growing thicker. The answer is yes, but they need an abutment to support themselves. If the old pipe is still intact, the root can support itself on the old pipe and push the liner inwards. If, on the other hand, the old pipe is broken, the root will tend to rest on the liner and push the fragments of the old pipe outwards into the soil. So we see in rehabilitation, it may actually be better if the old pipe is in poor structural condition. Connections are another issue. The liner ends in a manhole after all and the side connections must also be tied in. These areas can then be weak points through which roots can penetrate into the manhole or into the main sewer again. By the way, the same applies to rehabilitation against groundwater infiltration. In this case too, the tightness of the manhole connections and the lateral connections is of particular importance. What else needs to be considered when doing construction work in the vicinity of trees? Here we see an illustration from a German standard on tree protection. A pipe trench is shown to the right of the tree. The first thing to, note, to notice is that a distance of 2.5 meters is required between the trench and the tree. Some network operators believe that this requirement serves to protect the line from root growth. However, this is not the case. As I said, this is a standard for tree protection. The tree is to be protected from excavation in the immediate vicinity of its trunk. In addition, the roots and the trench are not to be cut, but carefully re-embedded after the construction work. The fact that it is not a question of pipeline protection can already be seen from the picture. In this example, the roots grow further beyond the limit of 2.5 meters. Nevertheless, Sewer and pipeline engineering should also have a high interest in ensuring that the roots are not damaged. Because if we cut the roots during our construction work, we put the tree under stress. If the tree loses large parts of its root system, it will react with increased growth. And in particular with strong growth at the cutting points. This means, however, that with root cutting, we provoke the formation of new roots in the trench. And if the trench still consists of loose backfill materials, well, then these many new roots will not leave the trench. It is then only a matter of time before the first root damage occurs to the pipes. In this example, we see the influence that soil quality has on tree growth. In this parking lot, there are trees of very different sizes. However, all these trees are of the same species and all trees were planted at the same time. The difference, however, was in the available root space and the compaction of the soil. The trees at the edge are right next to a green strip with good tree substrate. The trees in the middle of the car park, on the other hand, were planted in very narrow planting pits and the soil around the planting pit was further compacted by traffic. So there was hardly any development space for these trees in the subsoil. This is also confirmed when we look at the size of the tree crown. Here a rule of thumb can be applied. Crown size equals root space size. And with this it comes immediately clear which subsoil conditions exist for the individual trees. If now we were to lay a pipeline across the car park, it would not be surprising if the roots of the trees grow into the trench and spread out. There is obviously no alternative for these trees to prosper. So it is important that we keep 
root growth and infrastructure planning in mind together. This can even go so far that we cleverly combine the functions of the substrate. In this picture, we see an example from Sweden. Here, the root space of the trees was also used as a hydraulic element and storage for rainwater. Under the tree, we see a large infiltration trench with extremely coarse material. Through the inlet on the right, the rainwater can inflow into the infiltration trench and is then stored and infiltrated there. For the tree, the infiltration trench then provides root space and a source of water. This picture shows the construction phase. The infiltration material consists of very coarse stones and cohesive components to bind water and nutrients. Here we see the inlet via the grid. The water is fed directly into the permeable coarse-grained soil layer. Before the construction work, the street used to look like this. Road traffic dominated the picture and the water was fed directly into the sewage system. After the construction work, the rainwater flows from the roof surface over the surface of the pavement to the inlet points. From there, it can flow underground to the trees. A large part of the traffic space was of course given up for this measure. In return, however, the park-like character increases the quality of life and living. Especially in summer, the trees also contribute to shadowing and evaporation. So much for an overview of the topic of trees, roots and their interaction with sewers and pipes. Surely we all realize that we need both in our cities, trees and pipelines. It's about coexistence for the benefit of the citizens. However, things can get very tight on the ground. As a rule of thumb, the tree also demands root space according to its crown size. And root growth is just that, the search for space. Roots can exert immense pressures. We have already measured over 10 bar in tests. Therefore, protecting the pipe from root penetration is a relative rather than an absolute question. The risk of root intrusion is significantly lower if there is enough attractive root space elsewhere and if the pipeline area is rather unattractive in comparison. But for this, we also have to think about the soil quality. Combined solutions that also take into account rainwater management objectives, for example, are particularly interesting here. Thank you.